All right, Ephesians 2 this morning. Uh, I know there's many other things we could get up here and talk about that we got going on, the Alzheimer's supper. I think it's next, well, lunch is next week. I do need y'all to be, don't fix nothing to eat next week, all right? We're going to feed you on that day. So anyhow, but here we, we've come, it took us, what, six weeks or so to get through chapter one of Ephesians. Now we're going to get into chapter two. And uh, we're going to look this morning at maybe about verse 1 through 4. We'll go ahead and read them. It says, Ye, and you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. I tell you what, it don't give you don't have to have much insight from the Holy Spirit to look around and see that spirit of disobedience mm -hmm. is at full force work today. Amen. I tell you what, uh, if, if you can't see that, then your mind's not on the Lord, because I tell you what, evil, evil men and seducers are waxing worse and worse. Mm -hmm. We're getting in that day. We shouldn't be surprised at it. It makes us sick sometimes, but we really shouldn't be surprised at it. Because that's the, the state we're going to find the church in in that day, in that day and age. As it were, Jesus said, in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And so we're there, no doubt about it. I'm just looking any time for Him to come. I don't think there's nothing left to be fulfilled for His coming to come. And I'm just looking forward to the day that He comes and gets us. But He talks about, He goes on and says in verse 3, among whom also we, he's right to the church, he's right to believers, all had. Now listen, that's going to include us all. <laughs> you know, you get a lot of people who get saved, sanctified, set apart, and we all are if we're in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. They tend to get to a place where they think, ah, you know, I never, well, yeah, you did. We all had our conversation. We all had our walk in those times past in the lusts of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others what's well, pretty strong right here the holy spirit's laying out on us this morning but god and i like that i tell you i started for a couple of years writing down the but gods in the bible Man, I think I filled up two or three pages. Didn't even get through with it. Just, just left it. I was going to do a, a whole series on, and I may do it at some point. I was going to do a devotion for every day of the year on the but gods. Man, it was overwhelming to me. Okay, maybe God will direct me back on that, but uh, every now and then I'll pull them out and look at it. And here's one that's great. But God, who is? Don't have to worry about if he's not. He is. Just as he is the I am. Who is rich in mercy. For his great love wherewith he loved us. I go on and read verse 5. I know we ain't going to get that far. But we'll, we'll touch on it next week. Even when we were dead in sins, <coughs> hath he quickened us together. There's our word quickened again. With Christ, by grace, ye are Say Now back in verse number 1, I know you know this scripture. You hear it all the time. You're very familiar with it. Ye, you, and you had the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. That word quickened, of course, uh, refers to being made alive. He said you, and that refers to a personal reference to everyone who has trusted in Christ as their Savior and Lord. That's all of us. If we've been born again, if we've accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, then this includes us, you. I like the personality of it. I'm so glad God can be universal and He can be personal. Amen. That's just who He is. We can't explain who He is, how He works. Or, uh, nobody can instruct Him on how to move. We just need to be in obedience to Him and let Him direct our Past. The steps of a good man are what? They're ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in those that trust in him. 
So that refers to you that hath uh, been saved. It's personal there. And then hath he refers to something we don't have to wait for. Amen. It's already been done. You hath he. I'm glad I ain't now. Look, I got my body's got to wait on its redemption. All right? Mm -hmm. But the redemption has been paid in my spirit and in my soul. And it's been paid already. The ransom's been paid. The redeeming of it, the purchasing of it has been done. But the, the fulfilling of it has not yet been done. So here, and he's looking into the spiritual man. He's looking into the part of man that you and I cannot see. He says, you hath he. It is a done deal. Quicken. And of course, that's made alive. It means resurrected. We still use it in our, our times today in our thing. I know I'm very bad and have been all my life about biting my fingernails. And some folks that just uh, grosses them to the max. Alright? Some folks they just do it. I mean, I, and I've got a problem especially riding down the road. I don't know what it is. I just bite my fingernails. Alright? But sometimes I'll bite them and you know what? I'll get down a little too far when I pull that piece of meat off. And that's called the quick. Yeah. Get it down to the quick. Yeah. Well, that's one of the Greek words we still use today. So every time you bite your nails or you cut your toenails and you pull that thing off to the quick, you think about the Word of God because it's alive. Mm -hmm. Amen. We use it <laughs> still today. <laughs> it is alive. And you, that is each individual, hath he, it's already been done, he has quickened, he has made alive. A resurrection has taken place. I want you to report to you that every believer has already had the miraculous power of a resurrection performed on you physically, uh, on you physically with your physical eyes, and you and I were not able to witness it. Now, eternally that happened. Uh, a resurrection took place. We was dead in trespasses and sin. We, I say it like this. We got this thing all the time talking about zombies. Zombies have gotten popular now. <laughs> all right, I work a lot in Sonoa, and everything. The Walking Dead. <laughs> well, you know what? Way before the Walking Dead come along, all of us that were before Christ were walking around. Well, there's a lot of walking zombies today. Yes, we don't see the corruption that's on the inside. But we can look back and realize the corruption that was in uh, our lives. And so ye hath he quickened. Uh, if we could look in and see the resurrection that took place, the dead got up inside of our lives. But also every individual that has the light, had light to replace darkness, life to replace death, cleanness to replace filthiness, you know exactly when that transaction happened within your heart. You don't have to explain it. You couldn't see it. It just happened. I'll never forget the time when uh, that light did come into my life and I seen it and I tell you what, I was changed. That darkness had to flee. You know what? When light comes in, darkness had to flee. When life comes in, death has to flee. When cleanness comes in, filthiness has to to flee, it has to go. Amen. It cannot stand around in that presence. So every one of us who has had that occurred, we know exactly when that change happened. That's what the Bible calls regeneration, what we call a rebirth, a regeneration. That's exactly what the Spirit of God does. We've talked a lot in this first chapter about the working of the Spirit of God, how He seals us how He leads us, how He is our earnest uh, of our possession. He is an earnest until the redemption comes. But that's exactly what He does. He's done a lot, but also He quickened us. He made us alive. Now, I want to take the time this morning, and we'll read on through the rest of these in just a moment, but I want to look at a couple of passages this morning about uh, the quickened here. There's three people that we see in the the Word of God, 
uh, that Jesus resurrected as he walked through the New Testament time, as he walked around. You know, it's amazing. Uh, the undertakers, they couldn't stand to see him come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <But> why? <laughs> in a time when life can walk by death and death not be swallowed up. Amen? Amen. He just he messed up funerals. He messed up a whole lot of businesses. You even remember when he cast all them demons out in Mark 5? Yeah. They ran in them herd of swine. Them folks got mad. He had to run off the cliff. Hey! <laughs> Somebody come in there and, and just a matter of a moment destroys your income and your business and you're trying to provide for your family, you might think a little bit different. Alright? No, not taking knowing Jesus out of the equation now and him as being a provider. But they was upset. Their livelihood was upset. But anyhow, those three things, these three people mentioned in the scripture, number one, we see Jairus' daughter that was dead. And she was only 12 years old. In Mark 5, 41, I won't turn there, but if you remember the book of Mark and, and chapter number 5, what took place there, and I just mentioned the maniac in Gadara that he cast all those swine into, he was on the way to go to Jairus' house. And his daughter at that time wasn't dead, but she did die before he got there. What happened in between that as he went on that way, well, that woman with that issue of blood come by and pressed through the, the crowd and touched his garment. And he still, on the way to do a miracle, performed a miracle, mm -hmm. even right there. So he touched her, uh, she touched his garment, virtue went out of him, and she was healed. So he gets to Jairus' daughter here, now only 12 years old, and Mark 5, 41, Jesus entered the room where death had overcame this little child. If you remember, they, they laughed him to scorn. They couldn't believe what he said. J Jesus put all of them out of the room except Peter, James, and John mm -hmm. and the parents. He said they're going to laugh. They laugh and they won't believe. They're not going to get their miracle. Amen. They're not going to get the witnesses. But those who believe, and I'm so glad he took the parents up there and he, he got into the bedroom with that little child that was now dead because it seemed like Jesus was late on the scene once again, as we'll see in a little bit, but he's never late, amen? He's amen. always on time. He got up there and he went into that room. Oh, man, amen. I don't know if you've ever seen it. <laughs> you've ever been in the room, and I have. I, I remember seeing my dad. I can name, I can name Fred Jones. I can name a bunch of them that I have been in and seen them in that slab let's lay in there basically and death has done took over that body and the spirit has moved on out of them and most of the time they sitting there like this because they ain't no more breath in them they're gone here's this little child up here death has swallowed death was so thick in that room little innocent looking 12 year old child he walks up to the body and says, Talitha kumi, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. So we see that scene. A little 12-year-old girl. Keep that in mind as we go through. Next we see the widow's son raised. And I want to look and uh, I want to look at this, these few verses here in the Gospel of Luke in chapter number seven. To make sure this thing ain't went to sleep on me this morning. And make sure y'all ain't going to sleep, amen. Let's look at verse 11. It came to pass that the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when they came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. They was comforting this lady. She'd already lost her husband while well, she was a widow. And now her only son was dead. And so, the, the, I don't know what her standing was in society, in the community, but I do know this, she must have been a good lady because there was a big following with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the beard. That is what we would call a casket today, all right? And 
they that bear him stood still, what we would call the pallbearers today. And he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. So he was going down and he, he seen the commotion that was taking place. And here was this widow's son laying out here dead. They carried him. Now they didn't have him in a casket closed up like we did today. It was just like a, a gurney, kind of like we would take the uh, in the Easter plate, take that man uh, that was going to be raised down through the roof, you know, and four men's got him and they walking along. Well, here he was, he was dead. There was a big following going on. But he come by, and look what's in. He, he said, he came and touched the beard, touched the palate, if you will, whatever you want to call it, the cod, I don't care. And they that bear him stood still. I tell you what, when Jesus comes on the scene, he come up there and he touched him, and everybody stood still. I don't know if you've ever been in a place where you have stood still and seen God move in the place when you come in and God's presence comes into the house I tell you what it's enough to just make you stand still my goodness I feel him what is he going to do now and here in this situation he reached out he said he spoke to that dead that dead man he said young man I say unto thee arise and he that was dead sat up and began to speak. <laughs> Amen. Oh, mercy sakes. He got up and he began to speak. Now they carried this man out on the gurney, if you will. This man's walking to the cemetery, fishing to be laid in the tomb. And Jesus comes by and touches him. Now, uh, and of course, there's a one we are all familiar with, and that is uh, in Luke, uh, John chapter 11, Lazarus. I mean, we're very familiar with that. In verse 38 through 44 of John chapter 11, you know the story there. In this case, uh, this Lazarus was already decaying, all right? He was already in the condition. So, in these three cases of death recorded, we see three different stages of death. Yet, they was all dead. Three different stages, yet they was all dead. Uh, one was on a, uh, the, the widow's son was already dead on the way to the cemetery. The pretty little young girl, only 12 years old, you know she didn't have no wrinkles. That beautiful, young, tender face, mm -hmm. she died. And then Lazarus was dead four days. And his sister said, by now, Lord, he stinketh. He was already starting to decay. When we see lost people, we can see these stages. At least we can look on them in these stages. Uh, that's why it shouldn't be no difference in how or whom you share the gospel with. Okay, so here it is. We got these little children. They look innocent, but they need the gospel. Amen. Mm -hmm. If they come to the, to the age where they know right from wrong and they know Jesus died for them they must be told that and i don't know what the age of accountability is i'm just going to go on and tell you it's not defined in the word of god it is like any other truth the more truth you have the more accountable you are Amen. i don't care what age it is now i, I know i, I <coughs> see these kids you know five and six years old like mine were that got saved at that age i praise the lord for that but they had a upbringing to know right from wrong yeah. We got kids out here that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old. They ain't never heard the gospel. Yep. Don't know nothing uh, about God except His name is to be condemned. They hear it in the movies. They see it in the, hear it in the songs. They, they watch it. They hear their parents. And they don't know nothing about God. They got a different age. Okay? So it's accountability. So here's this young girl. And, and so we see the people out here. Children. Although they look innocent, yet they are dead without Christ. People in their midlife, as dead as the pallbearers told him, this man uh, to the hearse. Then older people, they've been dead so long, they're decaying. You can look at them, man. I mean, they turned down Jesus Christ for so long. Here they are. I've seen them 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, 90 years old get saved. And look at their faces. Look at all, I mean, that inside. 
Man, they're just decaying. They in the stage of Lazarus, amen. Mm -hmm. Some are in the stage of the little girl. And some are in the stage of the widow's son. And some are in the stage of Lazarus. Yet, nonetheless, one is as dead as the other in need of a spiritual resurrection. I tell you, at one time, I was as dead as these examples we have in the Scriptures. But one day Jesus Christ came to me on January 6, 1991. Amen. He passed by. He said unto me, Talitha Kumi. He came and touched me on my beard and said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And I that was dead, I sat up and began to speak. He came by on that Thursday night in Mills Chapel Baptist Church in Newton, Georgia. He looked all the sins that had me bound up, the same kind that had Lazarus bound. And he looked at me and he said, I loose him and set him free and I came out alive. Ye who were dead. And you can find your place in that. Amen. If you're a child of God. I know that's my personal testimony. But I was bound just like Lazarus. I see him. I mean, man, I was all bound up. Amen. I couldn't get free for nothing. But Jesus came by my dead bones one day. My dead life that was inside of me. He looked at them rags and he said, Loosen those chains. Loosen and let him free. And I'm telling you what, they let me go. Amen. Amen. Now, I have problems with putting chains <laughs> back on my stupid self. But I tell you what, and what took place on the inside of this dead man, a resurrection happened. I know we got one to look forward to on this body. Alright? But I'm telling you, each individual who was dead, he had quickened. And so that's the there in verse number one, the A part of it. Now verse the B part through verse three, we see the course and the condition of our life before Christ. But also we see the course and the condition of a lost man today. He said you were dead in trespasses and sins. Plural, both of those. Amen. It was more than one that had us. But nonetheless, it has. us. We're in times past. I like that. That means that's times past, brother. It's under the blood. It's gone. Amen. I'm so glad of that. It's gone. It's times past. And I will stop and say this this morning, that it should remain times past to Amen. us. That's right. We're not going to be perfect, but we can do our best to walk as holy and as close to God and to honor Him in every situation that comes in our life. Will we fail? I will. Absolutely. And I know you will. Yep. But you know what? We ought to dig in that spiritual man that's alive. <laughs> we're alive. We're, we're resurrected. Amen? And we're to look at and try to do right. We're in times past we walk according to the course of this world. We're not to do it anymore. We're to walk with Jesus. Amen. In His Word. Let the Spirit of God direct us. We walk according to the course, the direction of this Word. We walk according to the prince of the power of the air. And we're going to see, ain't it amazing how much in Ephesians that the Holy Spirit uses Paul to write to this church and talk to him about the depths of the spiritual warfare that goes on? This is a deep book. Amen. Yeah. Hey, it's all a deep book. Amen. <laughs> There's a lot of wisdom there. And uh, I remember I was standing with somebody one day and they said something about, we was in a crowd of people, and they said something about, man, that's a good scripture right there. I said, they ain't a bad scripture, bro. <laughs> Amen. They ain't a bad one. He said, you got it? You right. <laughs> we might not like them all, but they ain't a bad one. Amen. And so all right, good. But we walk according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit, that spirit, that demonic spirit, that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Notice now, we're in times past. That's a past tense. Ye walk, past tense, according to the course of this world. It's on a direction. It's set out on a course. It's going in one direction. According to the prince of the power of the air that's running this world, that's directing this world. He said, the spirit that now, that's present tense, this same spirit worketh in, that's present tense, the children of disobedience. Those 
that do not seek after God. Those that won't know, don't want nothing to do with God. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Amen. That's the truth right there. That's a good scripture. <laughs> Amen. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. It's easy to tell when God is not in the thoughts of someone. But we was just like that. All of us. He said, among whom, that's all, also we all, somebody say that word with me, had. Past tense. Our conversation, our walk in, there it is again, times past, in the lust, plural, of our flesh. I want to tell you the flesh still lusts. Every day. Your flesh lusted this morning. It's already done this. My flesh has already lusted this morning. We have to try to Real, ring that flesh in. One day the flesh is going to be changed to all spirit. Amen. Amen. This everything's going to be made new. This blood's going to be gone. It's going to be uh, put back with the Holy Spirit of God. It's going to flow through our veins. We'll be in the presence of God. But until then, we are robed in this flesh. He said, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. It's getting convicting in here. I know it is. It's convicting me reading this right here. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh. When we was lost and we was on the direction of the world, we was ruled by the prince of the power of the air, we fulfilled the lust of the flesh. That's all we wanted to do is get up and please the flesh. Wasn't that hard to do? <laughs> the yep. flesh is going to do what the flesh is going to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. We just let the Spirit of God do what He's going to do in us. We was fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Here it is. And were by nature. Look, we act like we act because that's the way we are. I don't care what a lost man is going to act like a lost man. Don't expect a lost man to be convicted of his mouth. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So don't, don't go up and think that a lost man can watch something and it not bother you. You say, well, that ought to bother you. Well, if a man's not saved, it's not going to bother him because he's going to be doing what the flesh. Same thing, stuff didn't bother you before you got saved. Now, if the stuff I'm talking about is bothering you this morning, well, you might want to check up between you and the Spirit of God. Amen? He said, well, by nature, the children of wrath, even as others that walk this way. I'm just going to add that. That's not there. Okay? But as others, they the same way. You was the same way as they are. Verse 4. But God. But God. You know what? Sometimes we need to use that all the time. I do. But God. Mm -hmm. Who is rich in mercy. He's got plenty of it. For his great love wherewith he loved us. And then he says even when we were dead in sins. I, I can't do that no justice. We've got to pick that up next week. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're going to have to pick up but God next week. Eh? Amen. <laughs> Let's pray. Father. God, we thank you, Lord, for your love for us. Thank you for the truths that's in your word. Thank you for the encouragement of the scriptures. Thank you that you love us like you do. We praise you now. We love you. Ask you to help us to worship you in spirit and truth, Lord, because your word says today you're seeking such to worship you. Help us be that such. In Jesus' name, amen.